Interactive AL, a pipe dream or madness? Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I've been playing around with my AL compiler for the last couple of weeks uh, in the pursuit of a new, a new idea. Or perhaps this is not really an, a new idea, but you know the idea of working interactively with something. Um, Usually, whenever we work with AL, we go through the, you know, the the classic code, compile, deploy, debug, code, compile, deploy, debug, circle. Um, but and and it it's the, there's not really any shortcut in that circle, right? That that's the process you have to do. But being me surrounded by all these crazy old computers and stuff like this. Uh, like for instance, the, the Commodores, you know, you start up, you get a blinking cursor and then you can do stuff. You can, you can add in a program or you can just type a command and that command is executed straight away. Uh, and if we look at that, yeah, and I know that was 30 plus years ago, uh, almost 40. Um, but, we actually have several cases where where you and I are doing sort of that, you know, when working with SQL, when working with PowerShell and all that. You maybe you have like the PowerShell ISE and you mark the lines you want to ex execute it, or you do the same thing in SQL. Uh, so that in interactive interaction, wow, uh, with whatever you're working at, I thought. Hey, that could be pretty cool to have that sort of experience in some some way with AL. Um, and since I had the compiler technology sitting here now, then so what about if I I rearrange some bits so I kind of am able to, you know. Uh, compile just fractions and insert that into an existing something. So I did, and uh, let let me show you what I have. The, and and again, the the title of this video is very appropriate. I have no idea what this is, but at least it was fun to make, and uh, I think it's kind of cool. So let let me show you what I have, and 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 then it's up to you guys to, in the comments below. You know. Set me straight. Uh, um, 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 this is this madness, or is this a pipe dream, or maybe there is something. Let me know. Uh, anyway, you know what the comments are, and let's switch over to Business Central. And uh, as you can see, this Business Central is slightly different than your vanilla Business Central role center because. Here is most of the screen is mostly black and there's a blinking cursor. Uh, total homage to uh, to the Commodore 64. So, so on. And what is what is this? What can you do? Well, let me show. You. So um, we could we could declare a variable. And and as you know in AL, if you want to declare a variable somewhere, you have to start with var. Then we'll create i for integer. Now we have a variable. Um, so the syntax here is basically you type code and you hit enter, the code is executed. And what the result of the code is sitting in a state uh, that is persistent between commands. So I could now um I I could start a line with equal and equal means that whatever comes behind is an expression and the system will will evaluate that expression and print out the result so I can do i how about that well i is 0 what if I do i colon 4 and then I ask again what is i now i is 4 well, i is i times 4. What is i? Well, you, 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 get, you get the drift here. Um, and 
since we are now in this interactive thing, uh, there are other commands and they start with a colon. And colon list will tell you, hey, what, what variables do we have right now? Um, or what else do we have? What, about, what, if we, what if we say procedure, procedure test, maybe we want to pass a parameter here uh, and we will return an integer and we say, and right now I'm just doing a one line. I could also do shift enter and, and do this in one line, but uh, now in two lines, but let's just keep it simple. So now I'm declaring a procedure called test. It takes A as an integer, returns an integer, uh, well, prototype to return an integer, and we begin and then we exit A times two. Well, nothing happens if I do colon list now. I can see that right now in memory, I have I and I have test. So we can see, what if I do test five? Well, now test is a procedure that works in my, my thing here. Um, and and maybe integers are, are too simple, Eric. Everybody can do integers. So let's create another variable. How about cost and say that that's a record for customer. We'll do the, the colon list again, just to prove that now we have a cost. So we could say, well, cost find last. And since I started with the equal, uh, this is evaluated. I could also do cost dot find last. In this case, we're just executing the statement. We don't know if, if, if it returned false or true because we're now just executing the statement, but adding the equal, we get the result. And well, find last was true. So we could do equal cost dot name. Hey, that's a customer. Let's do cost find first. True also equal cost name. So clearly we have records and if we can also try to do, let's do if cost.find set then, and let's just go down to the next line to make it pretty. Uh, and we'll do a message cost.name until cost.next equals zero. Uh, I guess that's it. Enter. And we got all our customers listed out. Um, and every good console needs a clear command because, hey. Uh, and still we have this memory. So we could say what, which customer do we have now? We have Kronos, no, you know, Kronos Kardashi procurement. Uh, so we could do cost name equal cost name plus explanation point. How about that? And let's see cost name. And we do cost of modify. I think. I think you're catching on now what, what you can actually do here. So we are very, we're working interactively with AI. We're kind of giving, you know, fractions of a program that is executed within the same context, within the, the live environment, so to speak. And we still have I, which is still 16. We have a test procedure. Uh, and we have this variable. So if I knew, if I now do, let's remove the cost.find last just to, to get to that one. And we do cost.name. Well, we have, we just got it again from, from the database. So our modify worked fine, of course. Um, 
and I know this is not. I I, I kind of I know I went old school with the uh, with the terminal thing here because I thought that was cool and and I was kind of this. You know, you know sometimes ideas. Uh, merch is the wrong word. They probably collide. Uh, and uh, and I've been working on trying to simulate a, a serial connection through uh, Business Central uh, and, and some sort of protocol to talk with Business Central, um, which has proven quite a challenge because I need some, if I need to do something like this, I need to have, um, persistent memory between web service calls and in nav we could do some some funky uh dot net hacking which of course we cannot do in business central um but that's an upcoming project uh, if, if, let's see if that ever works but some part anyway um i think i think i've probably actually shown the idea here. So let me show you a bit of how this is actually implemented. Um, here is um, Visual Studio Code. As you know, let me make sure that this is visible. So the first thing that we can let's have a quick chat about that. This is the, you know, the terminal. Uh, so the terminal is actually, let me close this guy. The terminal is actually, oops, I, I closed it. Uh, a control add-in. Well, yeah, can you probably guess that? It's it's a terminal called xterm.js, um, which is by coincidence the same piece of technology that actually drives uh, some of these things um some of the so so that that's that's funny but it, but I, I needed something and and that worked quite well so the way it's done is simply that i get the xterm js and i have an add-on called xterm add-on fit so it will fit to the place it uses jquery so those three JavaScript files I, I installed as N NPM, grabbed the files that I added here. So those three, I haven't changed anything in them. Um, then I created a startup. Let's go up to the top. Uh, a startup uh, JS, which is in this guy a startup script and uses a new command to get a new terminal and we add the fit stuff and we use the terminal on the control add-in div. So remember that whenever you do a control add-in, uh, this is actually an iframe and inside the iframe there's a div section called control add in so this is where uh, you anchor stuff um, so i write on the terminal welcome to interactive al and i define a, a function called prompt that will go to a new line and then we'll we'll do al dash al thing I, I thought it looked cool uh, so it will show the prompt and of course we need the blinking cursor because it's all about the blinking cursor then you need to subscribe to a, a an event called on key inside terminal that will figure out if if enter is pressed and uh, let's actually wait with that so if nothing weird is pressed then whatever has been typed we add to a command variable if we hit backspace then we remove something we slice away the end of the the command um, but if enter is hit, then we take the command and we have a function called send to BC. Send to BC is sitting in script. And you can see this is, there's really a lot of, uh, <laughs> a 
a lot of uh, JavaScript code here to make this work. So send to PC will call Microsoft Dynamics Nav invoke ex extensibility method. And we want called command entered input. And if we go, we can see that that has been defined as an event. So if I find a page, uh, let's see where we want to find that one, not in source editor, not information. We want to find that in source under terminal. So we can see here, this is the, the BC script page. And um, we have a trigger, command entered. And uh, then if command starts with colon, then we want to process whatever has been entered as a console a terminal command. And right now, and this is actually kind of legacy, but I was I was playing around with treating stuff differently. So if if, if we start with var and a space, then we do something. If we start with an equal, then we do something else with the rest of the line, substring two. So starting from character two and the rest of it. Otherwise, we will just execute whatever is uh, in the uh, in the command variable. Uh, so, so I know that right now I have two sections here that so line twenty and line twenty six are doing the same. But hey, that's the thing. Um, so anyway, here we call two functions. We have execute and we have evil code. Um, execute is here. And actually that's a variable we're not using, so don't let's move, remove that. Um, and you saw that I always omitted uh, a semicolon, but it says that if there's no semicolon, just add one to make the, the compiler happy. Um, then we call the compiler and say pass the, the source. So pass is just taking the source and, and splitting it into fractions. So so whatever we type here, so if we type uh, i equal five, then this is actually passed into three uh, sections. A, an identifier saying i, a uh, a, a, and a, well, it's first is lexed into three sections. So the I, the colon equal, and a five. Um, then it's passed into a an assignment statement. So colon equal means that this is an assignment, and I is what we're assigning, and five is the expression we're assigning with. Um, so after this has been compiled, we get a compilation unit which is all the code in here in, in a structured JSON form. And uh, if we have errors, then if the compiler had errors, then show the errors. Otherwise, um, capture console is, is a function that will, so now as you see, we're switching to the interpreter. So um, capture console will just make sure that we capture message and errors and stuff like that. Instead of showing them on screen, we capture them ourselves, well, most of them anyway. We run the code that's in unit, and then we call back into our um, uh, control add-in with a function called output, and we we get we get the whatever has been outputted to the console. Um, and this is just me being lazy because the X term JS wants line um, character line feed and and the other place the other way as I've been using the compiler line feed were enough so I'm just that's a dirty hack uh, somebody's got to do it right um, but the interesting thing here is that you can see that neither compiler no interpreter are local variables here. They are actually global variables in this page, meaning that as long as those code unit lives, we are working within the same environment. So they have now been changed into 
so the, so we can run multiple times within the same code unit. So so we can just run in a single line of code and it runs fine. You can see that that if I do the colon reset, then we're clearing the interpreter uh, code unit and, and removing everything from memory and, and like hitting reset on an old computer. Um, so in reality, what you're looking at, of course, if we exclude all the fancy fancy stuff inside the compiler, well, you're looking at a, a page with under 100 lines of code to handle the the thing and handle the um, all the interfacing to the compiler. Uh, uh, evil, evil code, the evaluating an expression, uh, will pass the expression just so instead of passing everything as, as AL, you just pass an expression and uh, then it will evaluate the expression. Uh, and we don't know what type the uh, the output should be. So we say undefined, so we will accept any output. Um, and then we write it um, to output. But you can see that if we go back to, we had a function here called output. And the output goes back into the JavaScript. So we can see the output simply writes what we get out in the terminal. So, so now the circle is complete. Um, so whenever we type this, the control line in, send us in, the compiler compiles it. We go back in this case because we just compiled, there's no output of i equal five. Uh, and we could ask, colon list and in this case we can go back and check what happened with uh, colon list well colon list calls into interpreter to get a list of variables um, and the list of variables gives you an, the variable name the type and the current value I think that the next evolution of this is probably something that's more like uh, where is it? I had it open, like, uh, like this guy, the uh, PowerShell ISE, or how uh, the SQL editor works. So you can kind of, you know, mark something and then execute uh, and, and and not execute. Um, so um, as like I said, as as I assigned the task to you in the beginning, let me know in the comments below what you what you think about this. Uh, uh, I had a lot of fun creating it, and and I can see myself in a lot of situations using this to you know, investigate, look at th things. Um, uh, actually, and 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 probably twenty three minutes. Yeah, totally bonus content. So in 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 case if we go back here. And and say hey, so I have my um, my uh, my cost variable. So let's do cost dot set filter uh, customer posting group. Uh, that's probably in cool. I also need some sort of uh, way to paste the table names and field names anyway. So that was bad. Customer posting group, comma, domestic. So we add a filter. Now I could actually say page.run22.cost. And I open a page with my variable from my interactive AL with the filter that was created in my AL. So that the, it, it, everything is correct. So this is translated into uh, to a real thing. So so while you're working, you can you can just call some UI and uh, we cannot create UI. That, that at present I have 
no clue how to on the fly create a page. Uh, I think there might be something. No, I have no idea. Um, but I think that's 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 pretty nice in order to uh, to actually work with things. Anyway, sorry, that was a, a bit, that's really a bad habit. Uh, uh, habit uh, adding uh, bonus content when I decide the video is done and then. There's more. Anyway, this is it, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun creating this, and uh, I will continue uh, refining this, probably going away from the terminal thing. But I found that the terminal is cool. Um, anyway, have fun, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.